yesterday's class was about uh, moving coordinate system and we continue on the same line. So, what we did in the last class is we considered a situation where there are two coordinate frames one is stationary which we labeled as x prime y prime and z prime and there is another coordinate system which is moving we call that z, call this x y and z and the movement is taking place around an axis which is given by n capped and the velocity of movement instantaneous velocity rotational velocity is omega. So, in this situation we have shown that uh, time derivative with respect to this fixed frame and this moving frame of any arbitrary vector g is related by d g d t fix is equal to d g d t rot plus omega cross g. Now, we proved that assuming that uh, by one particular property of a rotating vector, if this is a fixed direction around which a particular vector is rotating. So, this is one position of the vector. So, so essentially the vector whichever is rotating around this particular axis has to stay on this cone okay, on this, this surface. I okay. will just draw it a little bigger for you guys. So, that So, let us say this is the direction n capped and this is one position of that vector and this is another position of that vector. So, let us call this vector a here and a plus delta a here as the direction is changing. So, this vector a is not fixed anymore. So, the deviation from this here to here is given by delta a right. Now, what we did was we took the angular deviation theta and we have shown that this delta a can be written as the magnitude of delta a can be written as a delta theta okay. and the vector direction is on this way. So, that is if we take the cross product of omega and a sorry omega is in this direction omega is along the direction of n capped. Okay. So, if we take the cross product of omega and a in the limiting case the vector d a will have the same direction. We can also have an alternative proof for it if you simply join this and let us call this angle delta theta instead of this angle it will be sorry this will be delta theta. Okay. So, it is the same thing essentially because this and this angles they will be they has to be equal it is just the 2 d projection of this particular case. Okay. So, we can and if this angle is phi then this length we can very easily show that this length is a sin phi and so d a will be a sin phi times delta theta. So, it will be d a will be equal to a sin phi delta theta right. So, d a d t will be a sin phi d theta d t which is nothing but omega because omega is the rate of change of theta or uh, yeah rate of change of this angle this particular angle or this particular angle whichever you want to look at it. Okay. And once again if you want to calculate the uh, want to look uh, explore the direction of this ch changing vector then you can write this as. Okay. So, this can be written as a sin phi 
omega because d theta d, uh, d theta dt is nothing but omega and in vector term d a d t is nothing but a sin phi sorry not a sin phi, but a uh, omega n cap cross a this will give you a sin phi n cap has a uh, magnitude 1. Okay. So, n cap cross a will give you a sin phi and this n cap times omega is nothing but omega. So, this will be omega cross a. So, either we can directly take this angle and d theta and compute delta a equal to a and de delta a and show that d a d t is equal to omega cross a or what we can do is we can take the 2 d projection of this particular problem in this plane or a plane down here as you wish that is totally up to you and we can again prove d a d t is equal to omega cross a. Now, the important result is d a d t is uh, now using this important result we can finally, conclude that this is the case for any vector g which is moving uh, which is uh, represented either in the fixed coordinate system or in the rotating coordinate system. Now, as this relation is true for any vector g, what we could do is we replaced g with r and we showed that it is v 0 is equal to v plus omega cross r. right? Now, what is omega cross, uh, what is v 0? v 0 is the velocity of a moving body which is measured with respect to this fixed frame and v is the velocity which is measured with respect to this moving coordinate system, rotating coordinate system. So, we can now instead of taking g equal to equivalent to r, we just take it as v 0 and using this form of v 0, we can write d d t of v plus omega cross r equal to d t t dot v plus omega cross r plus omega cross v plus cross r. Right. So, this we can write and simplifying see uh, actually, this side we do not have to do it sorry, we can just keep this as v 0. Okay. So, now this will be nothing but d 2 v 0 d t 2 right and on the right hand side we have. So, this v without a suffix. Okay. So, this is the velo, uh, this is the velocity as which is measured in the rotating coordinate system. So, if we take this time derivative once again, it will be simply d 2 v d t 2 and next term we will have a omega dot cross r plus omega cross r dot plus omega cross v plus omega cross omega cross r. Right. Now, omega cross r dot please remember this r dot is once again the uh, velocity which is measured in the rotating coordinate system. Okay. So, r dot is the time derivative which is taken in rotating coordinate system that is the velocity v in rotating coordinate system. So, we have this term twice. Okay. Now, this term if I if now if I multiply this whole thing uh, sorry this is not d 2 v d t 2 it is simply d v d t sorry. So, if I multiply this whole thing with mass of this particle which is invariant because mass is a quantity which is invariant under any coordinate transformation. So, uh, oh well in the non relativistic world in the relativistic world we have a different story altogether we are not going into that. So, if the mass is constant. So, if we multiply this both side of this equation with mass what we get is a 
mass term everywhere here and here right now look at this term m dv dt and this is measured with respect to the fixed coordinate system now newton's law is valid in a uh, inertial frame which is in this case the inertial frame is the fixed coordinate system the other coordinate system is rotating so it's not an inertial frame now according to newton's law f is equal to m dvdt okay now in this case in the current notation we are using it will be dv0 dt fix so this term on the left hand side gives you the net force which is acting on the on the particle of mass m okay so that is a true force because this particular term it's uh, i mean once again this is the acceleration term multiplied by mass in the rotating coordinate system which has the same dimension of this one but this is the actual force because this is measured in a uh, inertial frame now if we rearrange this equation from here if we rearrange this equation replacing this by f okay and keeping this into one side and rest in the other side so we can write this as m dv dt is equal to f plus now it will be twice m into omega cross v now when we change sides the cross product will also change side so it will be twice m v cross omega right the uh, this will also change sign so it will be m r cross omega dot right plus now the last term will be m omega cross r cross omega right so this is the actual force and all these three additional terms are the fictitious or pseudo forces which is a result of this rotating coordinate system now please understand this this force is measured in the fixed frame in the inertial frame and the pseudo forces they do not exist in the inertial frame because right now we have written in this equation in a particular form where we measured the velocity itself in the moving coordinate system all this additional fictitious force terms they appear now consider earth as an example of moving coordinate system as we discussed uh, in yesterday's class also what happens uh, we have this is our earth let's say let's consider it, it to be a sphere okay this is the direction of omega omega being the velocity of rotation for earth and so it's rotating in this particular manner in a in in this particular direction now omega is constant so at least for earth this term has no meaning because this is mr cross omega dot if omega is a constant then this term will vanish but these two terms will survive so especially when we are writing this equation for earth we can get rid of this two term this particular term but these two terms will still survive the this term is called coriolis force i think you are familiar with this and this coriolis force causes the monsoon this coriolis force causes uh, cyclone to rotate in a particular direction this coriolis force causes river to bend uh, in in once i mean the one of the one side of the river bend river, uh, uh, river bank to go up and other side to go down and also for this coriolis force a uh, horizontal cannon shot deviates from its uh, uh, line a uh, vertical falling object deviates from its path all this happens for this coriolis force so we'll discuss that briefly and this one is the familiar centrifugal force which acts on any object on this planet now because of this particular force okay so i'll will 
go into it in rather in, in details. What happens because of this force? This force is actually if you if we draw this uh, you know the components of omega and r carefully. Let us say on any object at this particular position, this force will have a direction in this, this way. Also the magnitude will be very small because it is of the order of omega square. Omega itself is a small number we will see very soon. This will have a magnitude which is small, but please understand this. Although small it is non I mean non trivial, there is a effect of it. So, the acceleration due to gravity which is g uh, which is the gravitational pull of earth is along this particular line. Because of this one presence of this force the acceleration will not be along this particular line, but in a line which is slightly deviated from it. Please understand the magnitude of this force is very small. Okay. So, if we draw it at scale it will be almost non-existent, but because of centrifugal force our true uh, you know direction of true gravitation acceleration is not exactly towards the center of earth, but slightly deviated from it. Okay, so, we will take it up later on, but right now let us focus on Coriolis force on earth. Okay. So, we will first have to define a coordinate system on our planet and then we will take it up in a more systematic manner. First of all, what is the magnitude of omega? Omega is the earth's speed of rotation and this has a magnitude of 2 pi by. So, the complete rotation takes place in one day. So, the magnitude is 2 pi by one day that is 24 hours okay, which will be I uh, will have the number somewhere here. Right. So, it will be 2 pi by 24 into 3600 and if you calculate this it will be 7.3 into 10 to the power minus 5. Uh, right. Radians right yeah, 7.3 into 10 to the power minus 5 radians. So, please keep this number in mind, we will be using it a lot. Right. Now, let us uh, first start defining a coordinate system and then we will be discussing Coriolis force. This Let us go to this particular point on earth which is at some latitude okay, I think this is better some latitude theta. Okay. So, okay. so, this is the equatorial plane of earth and we are at this particular point P which is at a latitude theta on earth surface. Now, what happens is okay, I think I will just switch to pen and paper. So, this is our planet. Again my drawing is not never very good excuse me for that. So, this is the equatorial plane and this is a point of our interest. Now, where is omega? This is the center. So, the axis of rotation is this. So, this is again the direction of omega which is a rotation in this particular direction. Now, let us try to define our coordinate systems which is along the same line which joins this point to the force center. So, if I extend this line above the ground, please remember understand this blue part is inside the ground and this red part is above the ground. So, this is my 
e z direction. Let us call this coordinate system e x e y and e z. Now, it is a right handed coordinate system. Now, how do we draw a right handed coordinate system? Typically, this is my x, this is my y, this is my z. Now, try to place this point here and try to align y towards the north pole. If you do that, this is your y, you will see that your x will be somewhere in this direction. Okay, it does not look very, the angles does not look very right, but this angles are all 90 degree. So, this is my x or rather I will call it E x here and this is my E y. So, this is my E y direction, this is my E x direction. Now, try to place this omega vector at this origin. Right. So, this is once again your omega vector and now okay, where is it? Yeah. Now, this angle is your latitude which is given by theta. So, this angle once again is theta. So, this angle will be 90 minus theta. Right. So, if you recompose this omega vector or the angular velocity vector into this new coordinate system, the components of that will be omega along E x equal to 0, omega along E y is equal to, see it will be 90 minus theta. So, this angle will be theta. So, it will be omega cos theta and omega E z equal to omega sin theta. Now, if you look into, I mean, if you are studying books by, for example, Goldstein and many other textbooks, where you, you will see that this uh, component has been resolved, the components of omega has been resolved with respect to the co-latitude, which is this angle. So, instead of having omega cos theta and omega sin theta, they have omega sin theta and omega cos theta here. Okay. So, which is also true, please have to, you have to make sure you are, you you understand which angle it has been resolved around, whether it is the latitude or the co-latitude. I prefer latitude because that gives you a straightforward physical picture. Now, so we have omega cos theta and omega sin theta and if you study these components carefully, see theta is the latitude. So, if you go to the poles, theta will be equal to 90 degree or uh, either plus 90 degree or minus 90 degree. In both cases, omega e z will be maximum. So, we have maximum at poles and if you come to, oh sorry, 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 wrong. It will be minimum at pole, minimum at poles and maximum, uh, just give me a second. Yeah, that is true. Minimum at pole and maximum at equator, equator is the this plane in the center 0, 0 degree where theta is equal to 0 degree. right? And this one, this is minimum at equator and max at poles. Right? Now, the Coriolis force is given by 2 m root over v or uh, sorry 2 m times v cross omega no root over sorry. Now, if we consider an object which is moving in the in the horizontal plane of this of on this coordinate system. So, this point p is not a fixed point we can move it anywhere in the on on the earth surface in the northern hemisphere southern hemisphere. Okay. So, we have we essentially we have the same uh, uh, same type of component result. Uh, uh, we can resolve the same components for omega. Now, also please note that omega e z, this is the component which depends on sin theta. So, as theta b is positive in the northern hemisphere and negative in the southern hemisphere, omega e z changes its sign in different hemisphere, whereas omega e y, the y component remains invariant. Does not matter whether you go to northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, omega e z remains the same. So, now, if we consider the velocity v to be resolved into two components v x uh, e x cap plus v y 
e y cap. Then we can compute this to be equal to 2 m e x cap e y cap z cap v x v y 0 and this will be 0 omega cos theta omega sin theta which will be equal to okay, forget about 2 m it is always there. So, it is a 2 m here. So, E x cap will be V y omega sin theta okay, minus 0 plus E y cap. There is a twice m here outside. So, please keep that in mind. E y will be this minus so it will be 0 minus V x omega sin theta plus E z cap will be equal to uh, okay, so this minus this. So, it will be V x omega cos theta. So, we see that there will be components not only in the x y plane, but also in the z direction. So, that z direction component in z direction eventually means there will be a vertical uh, you know shift of this um, this this particle of mass m which moves with this particular velocity but for now we just neglect this we just ignore this term and we try to see what happens what deviation the particle suffers in the xy plane okay so so the coriolis force fc if we write it once again we can write this as omega sin theta v y e x cap minus v x e y cap. Okay. Now, look at this, look at this particular vector over here and so this is a vector here. So, we have this. Now, this vector if you take the dot product of velocity with this vector e x cap minus v x e y cap which will be v has to be replaced by v x e x cap plus v y e y cap right dot v y e x cap minus v x e y cap you immediately see that this will give you a big 0 right. So, you see if in the x y plane I am just drawing a trajectory of the particle in x and y plane. If this is the initial direction of velocity v, we get a direction of the force f, we get a particular direction of the force f which is by the by this particular dot product we immediately understand this, that, that the deviation is always in a perpendicular direction. So, if we fire a horizontal cannon shot with an initial velocity v in the x y plane, it got deviated by certain amount in the x y plane. Now, try to now try to see in uh, in terms of this particular picture. Okay. Let us assume that the uh, the cannon shot is fired along E y. So, initially it has only y component. If only V y component survives, then in the Coriolis force you see there is always only a V x component. Okay. So, if we fired the cannon shot along the northern direction, because y represents uh, uh, direction towards north. So, if we fired the cannon shot towards uh, the northern y direction. So, we will it will get a deviation in the x direction. Similarly, if we fire a cannon shot only in the v x direction which is the east direction, please understand that this is north and this is east this particular direction is east. right? So, if we fire it along the e x direction, so v y is equal to 0, then we see the deviation is along 
e y direction minus e y direction minus e y is south. So, that means, if we fire it along this direction the deviation is down south here. So, that is in the northern hemisphere. Now, if we come in the south southern hemisphere what happens is when we change theta to minus theta this particular term changes direction. So, in the southern hemisphere what happens is if we fire a horizontal. So, in this is this is the case of northern hemisphere. So, we get a deviation towards the towards right hand direction in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Now, what happens in southern hemisphere? In southern hemisphere because of this particular term it will change its sign. So, if we start with a v x Okay. So, we will get a, a minus v y, but there is a negative sign coming from this one also. Okay. So, effectively we will get a deviation in the y direction. So, in southern hemisphere if you start along the east direction you get a deviation in the north direction, you if you start along the y direction or uh, sorry e, uh, north direction then you get a deviation in the southern direction. So, if you are firing in a general direction this in the southern hemisphere then your deviation will be in the left hand side. So, essentially you can think of it this way your velocity vector if you are standing on the northern hemisphere your velocity vector and your omega, omega is towards I mean general direction of omega is upwards. So, your v cross omega will be a vector which will be going to the right of your velocity vector. Whereas, if you are standing somewhere in the southern hemisphere omega is actually going inside the ground here. So, your v cross omega will be a vector which will take you uh, which will which will direct towards the left of your original velocity direction. Okay. So, we will continue in from here in the next class right now let us stop. Thank you.